Repairing a Stuart Models number one steam engine part three, modifying the reversing lever travel, adjusting the main bearings, tweaking and adjusting the engine. As you can hear, the engine is running quite well now, in both directions. One problem I'm having with this engine is that when I drop the reversing lever to the full extent of the bracket, then it sounds very hard and very clunky. But with the reversing lever in this position, it sounds fine, it's running very smoothly. The bracket is just a little bit too long in my opinion. I'm going to shorten this so that the reversing lever cannot go quite as low. So I need to remove a chunk of this bracket, then re-silver solder it, reprofile it and put it all back together. Here's the bracket removed from the engine and it's just a little bit too long. So I'm going to take a chunk out of it. The first thing I'm going to do though is give it a good clean up. And now it's time for a health and safety warning. When you're using machine tools of any kind, be very careful and keep your fingers well away from the blade. Even though I'm showing my finger quite close to the blade, it's not as close as it looks on the video. As a musician, it's quite important to me to make sure that all my fingers are fully intact and fully functional for playing the keyboard. And for that reason, for the final cut, I use a pair of pliers to hold the part. And then I put the parts together. In this clip, I'm coating the two parts with some flux. This is silver solder flux, easy flow number two flux to be exact. And now I'm heating the part with a blow lamp. Please note, this is not soft soldering, this is silver soldering, which is also called silver brazing. So the temperature has to go much higher than it would have to do for soft soldering. When the part gets to a red heat and the flux takes on a watery appearance, that is the time to apply the stick of silver solder and you don't need much of it, just enough to flash around the joint. On a job like this, the more silver solder that you put on the joint, the more you're going to have to remove to make the part look okay again. And to illustrate the point, I'm applying too much silver solder to that side of the joint. And you'll notice that a great big blob of silver solder now resides in the gap in the center of the bracket and this will have to be manually removed with a needle file before I can use this part. And now for all the regular viewers, this is a rare treat. I'm letting you see a piece of metal cool from red to black. To illustrate the point that you must never quench a part whilst it's red, otherwise the silver solder joint will just collapse in the water. Once it's cooled to black, you quench it in some water and the thermal shock will get rid of some of the oxidization. I always have a pot of water next to my sanding machines. This is the Linisher, the four inch belt sander. And of course the part gets very hot when I'm using this. So periodically, when you see me taking it off the belt, it's going into the water. To insulate me from the heat, I could of course wear gloves, but I don't like wearing gloves in the workshop. I like to see where my fingers are at all times. And now I have to roughly sanding the part on the four inch belt sander, which is fitted with a very coarse belt. I'm using the 1 inch belt sander which has a much finer grade of sandpaper on the belt to finish it off. And here is a view of the shortened bracket after the sanding process. I then polished up the part on my polishing spindle and here I'm refitting it to the engine. In this clip I'm on my small boxwood lathe and I'm making a washer. Making a washer when you can buy them so cheap from hardware stores and DIY stores, yes, because this washer is slightly thicker and I just don't have one in the workshop. So after centre drilling a piece of half inch steel, I then drill it down the middle 3 sixteenths of an inch, and then I file the edges so that they're not sharp. One of the viewers suggested that I should not file against the work like I normally do, but from behind the work like this. Well, this is not a good idea because my arm is over the chuck and I don't like that. And also, of course, the file is filing the wrong way so it won't cut. I think I'll continue doing it the way I've done it for the last 40 years. But thanks for the tip anyway. Now it's time to part off the washer. I'm using my small parting tool on the little boxwood. But before I part it off all the way, I quickly use the file to clean up the edge of what is going to be the washer, because I don't want that to be sharp either. And whenever I file in the lathe, I always recommend that you don't do this. If you're a beginner, it can be dangerous. It's not quite that dangerous for me because I've done it for a long time. And I always have a good handle on the file itself. I'm sorry to keep repeating these warnings. They are getting a little bit of a pain. But 
I'm very concerned about any beginners trying to follow these directions and taking their arm off in the lathe whilst filing. So if you're not sure, just watch me do it, and just imagine what it's like to do it rather than do it yourself. When I fitted the washer where I intended it to go, it was okay until I moved the lever to the top, and then I realised that the geometry of the lever was slightly out, so the whole thing got very, very solid very quickly. And in the end, I put the washer on the other end of the reversing lever as a washer to the main knurled nut, and that's the nut that holds the lever in place when you tighten it at each end of the travel. This clamp nut is also used for notching up. Notching up is when you pull the reversing lever back towards the centre, or back towards reverse. And what happens, as you go back towards the centre, the valve moves a good bit less, and the engine uses less steam. I don't need to say much over this next clip, just have a listen to the engine and watch how well it runs. And now it's time to have a look at the main bearing. I'll just undo the bolts and I'll just drop that one on the floor. Luckily I've tidied up the workshop so I can see it very clearly on the floor and I'm picking it up at this moment. My good friends Colin and Martin, who I used to do the vaping reviews with, helped me clean up the workshop. And that also involved one trip to the tip and one trip to the scrapyard. Once the main bearing is released, I can remove it to have a look at it. And it's not bad really, not bad at all. The bearing isn't particularly scored, but it's a bit of a rattle fit, so what I need to do is remove some of the metal so that it will clamp down just slightly tighter onto the crankshaft. My friends and I changed the layout in the workshop so I have a lot more space, and it's tidy, which is unusual. And now in this area of the workshop I have a surface plate which will prove very useful. It's actually the main table off an old engraving machine that was never much good as an engraving machine, but this is a very good piece of cast iron. And of course it's very flat, so not only will I be able to use it for this purpose, I'll be able to use it for marking out components using a height gauge. I'll show that in action in another episode. This is also going to be a good foundation for putting an engine on and using a dial test indicator because the magnetic base will stick to the cast iron plate. After thoroughly cleaning and then oiling the main bearing, it's time to refit it to the engine. I'm making sure I fit it, of course, the right way around. It's very important when fitting items like this not to over tighten them. If you over tighten parts like this, there's a good chance you will distort the part. This bearing top cap is made of gun metal, which is quite a soft metal not like cast iron which is very solid and doesn't distort. And now having given the bearing top caps some attention, you can hear how much smoother the engine is. And that's all I'm going to say on the subject on this. I've been requested to shut up and let you hear the engine running. So thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. <laughs>